I've noticed that New Year's resolutions have been taking some heat lately. I get it. It's totally illogical that a single predetermined day is chosen for everyone to start their major life change. And by February, most of us have given up on our grand changes and retreated back to our normal lives. But there is something about a fresh calendar year that gives me hope and naturally makes me prioritize the changes I've been putting off. I think with intentionality and some realistic level setting, New Year's resolutions don't have to be something you feel guilty about by February. But what do I mean when I say intentional and realistic level setting? Have you heard the quote, most people overestimate what you can do in a year and underestimate how much you can do in a decade? Well, that about summarizes why New Year's resolutions have gotten their bad rep. We set unrealistic expectations for ourselves to completely reinvent our career, pay off our six figures of student loan debt, or go from super spender to super saver all in one year's time. But here's the thing. You don't have to solve all your money problems in one year. You just need to point the sales in the right direction. So what would be some more practical New Year's resolutions related to money? Well, that's what we're going to talk about. Here are four realistic financial goals that you can accomplish in 2024 that will set you up for a decade of success. You know those moments where you think, I wish I would have learned this in school? Those are the topics that we love to talk about. Join me each week as I interview experts sharing their strategies for solving problems that us young adults will face throughout our 20s and 30s. So what are you waiting for? If you want new episodes about adulting advice every Monday, hit that follow button. Number one is to spend less than you make in January. If you don't want money to be an issue in your life, you have to live below your means. It's literally step number one. You need positive cash flow. Living off of borrowed credit, especially credit card debt, is going to bury you and keep you living paycheck to paycheck and never allow you to really accumulate real wealth. In order to do this, you have to be intentional about what you're spending money on. You need to set a budget for yourself. I'm not asking you to spend hours tracking every penny. A simple budget is better than no budget at all. If you have a steady nine to five, like most of us listening, you probably already know how much your paycheck is going to be. At the beginning of the month, subtract out all your predictable expenses like rent, utilities, your phone bill, your insurance, and whatever is left is your maximum budget for all your variable expenses. Now, I think this is where you can have some flexibility. I don't think you need to track every variable expense. You already kind of knocked out your big ones like rent, utilities, your phone bill, all of those things. Everybody typically has one or two really, really tough variable expense categories. It may be restaurants. It may be drinks with friends, online shopping. Pick a category or two to monitor closely and just let the rest be. Set a fraction of the proportion of your leftover money to be the maximum cap on those categories. So if I make $5,000 a month and my fixed expenses are $2,000, I now have $3,000 left to spend. Let's say that I wanna allocate 10% of my $3,000 towards shopping. I now have a cap of $300 for shopping every single month. And I'm gonna monitor that number really closely. At the end of every week, I'm gonna look back and see anything that I've spent out of my shopping budget and then reset that for my following Monday. This will help you monitor the categories that might be pressure points on your budget while not spending a ton of time actually doing budgeting. If you're feeling really confident, try a no spend January. January is the perfect time to challenge yourself to do this as many people are doing the same. Limit your discussionary spending and instead opt for low low cost or free activities. Heck, even spend those gift cards that you got for Christmas. Doing this in January could set you up for a great habit for the rest of the year. Number two is to make an extra $100 in February. Okay, so January is over and you have successfully spent less than you made. It feels good because now you have some surplus money that you can put towards paying off debt, saving for a big goal, or investing for your future. And we did this all by mostly reducing our spending. Now it's time to work on the other side of the equation. I think the fun side which is making more money. I'm really passionate about this topic because I believe it is so much easier 
to make extra money instead of restricting your spending, especially when it gets down to the hard things like buying a concert ticket to your favorite band's upcoming show or trying a new restaurant that you're really excited about. I'm all about the tactics that will make a huge impact on your income, like asking for a raise, which will be a huge topic in 2024's podcast episodes. But for today's conversation, I promised you small and realistic goals that you can set for yourself. So let's give you one here. I want to challenge you to make an extra $100 this month. Don't discredit this one. It's less about how much additional income that you're going to make and more about seeing the impact of that additional income. A really simple and easy place to start is selling your unused items on Facebook Marketplace. Each weekend, clean out and organize a new room in your house. It could be your bedroom, your closet, your bathroom, your living room, your kitchen, your car. Make a pile of all of the items that you no longer want. And if you think any of those could fetch you some cash, take some pictures and list them on Facebook Marketplace. I have sold a ton of things on Marketplace, from clothes, furniture, kitchen gadgets, exercise equipment, holiday decorations. I swear, it does not matter. There is a market for everything on there. Plus, it will feel really nice to purge and upcycle some of your unwanted items. If Marketplace isn't your jam, find another way to make some additional money. You could tutor, do gig work, pet sit, freelance, just make it happen in February. Number three is to create a $1,000 emergency fund in March. Imagine, it's the beginning of March, we're living within our means, and we're starting to make a little bit of extra money. We are no longer stretching what we have until our next paycheck. But one unexpected expense, a car repair, a shattered phone, a weakened warrior injury, and we're back in a really bad spot. But these unplanned expenses don't need to derail our plan. Of course, that's where our emergency fund comes in. Having $1,000 stowed away can pretty much get us out of any pinch. And March is the month that we start building our emergency fund. By the end of the month, we are going to set aside $100 into what we call our emergency fund. And for each of the subsequent months of the year, we're going to do the same. By the end of the year, we should have $1,000 in our emergency fund that we can carry into 2025. If you continue side hustling or selling things on Facebook Marketplace, this could be a great use of your newfound income. If a true emergency comes up before the end of the year, no worries, don't sweat it. Use your fund. That is what it's there for. And start the process all over again. Once you hit $1,000, you can cut back and start directing a portion of that money elsewhere. But of course, I highly encourage you to build up at least three times your monthly expenses into your emergency fund. Number four is to invest your tax refund in April. It's April, which means it's tax season. Hopefully you don't owe taxes, but instead you're getting a refund. If you do get a refund, I challenge you to invest the whole thing. I'm usually an advocate of allocating a percentage of your bonuses or a tax refund to self-care spending, but hey, this wouldn't be New Year's resolutions without a little bit of sacrifice. Hopefully, you've already been automatically investing a portion of your paycheck into your 401k, your HSA, or your IRA. This is the way to be a successful long-term investor. But an opportunity like a tax refund is a great way to push beyond the systems you've designed for yourself. Let's assume that you get a $1,000 tax refund. Although it would be great to go take yourself shopping, you instead invest that money into a Roth IRA. You're 25 years old now, and in 40 years, whenever you're 65, you go to withdraw that $1,000. How much is in the account? $16,440. You didn't add any more money into the account. You simply let compound interest do its thing, and it grew 16 times over. Oh, and that was a conservative rate of 7% rate of return, which I honestly think you could probably bump up to 10%, but I wanted to give a realistic number in here with the cost of inflation as well. Now, what if you got into the habit of investing $1,000 of your tax refund every year? Whenever you look into that account 40 years later, you would have $229,000 in that account. Now you're starting to see the real impact of a small decision like investing your tax refund. Okay, so I gave you four ideas for four New Year's resolutions. These ideas are both realistic to accomplish and could make a significant impact on both your short-term and long-term financial success. As you've noticed, I'm a big fan of monthly goals, 
If you complete all four of these, I challenge yourself to take up eight more goals that would be more applicable to your unique situation. No matter what the year holds, adopting some timeless tactics can help you improve your financial health and well-being. And of course, don't forget to celebrate and make room for fun. I'd love to hear about one of your goals that you're excited about accomplishing in 2024. Send me a message on LinkedIn or head over to tsirpodcast.com to send us a message. As a reminder, we'll be shifting our release schedule back to bi-weekly in the new year. You'll start to see episodes come out every other Wednesday with an extra focus on money. So if you're excited about that, make sure to hit the follow button and to be on the lookout for, for some other changes that will be coming. I hope you guys all have a wonderful holiday and until the next episode, love y'all. Thanks for listening to the episode. As always, I appreciate your kind words. If you want to leave us a rating and review on your podcast player right now, that would absolutely make my day. If you want to find episode show notes, our blog, and other great resources, head over to tsirpodcast.com. If you have follow-up questions, an idea for a future episode, or just want to say hi, we have a contact form on our website and those messages go straight into my inbox and I promise you, I will reply. But all right, guys, I really appreciate you tuning in. I love you all and you're not alone. Let's keep making it through our struggles together.